And welcome, ladies and gentlemen, to Geek Watch, a subsidiary of the monastery, the open bar of the internet. I hey, this week he didn't fuck it up. <laughs> <laughs> God, no, you did! Damn it. <laughs> I had to. It had to be done. <laughs> you would have at least waited <laughs> for after he was done. <laughs> nah. You, <laughs> you motherfucker. <laughs> <laughs> uh, try to start over start over dude start over it's okay <laughs> yeah, start over. we'll do it live fuck it I we'll do it live one, the only gaming monk better known as Mildred <laughs> and with me I have one two three of my good brothers ha 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 we have the we have the the man who just who just did one of the more what our first groundskeeper rant before we went live and the and the and the man who probably who probably is looking to get in, looking to get into slap fights with groundskeeper Willie, good brother JT. <laughs> hey, have, that's the dandy way, baby. We <laughs> have the man. Ta we have the man taking over, taking over all of your anime <laughs> under a pair of hard boiled sunglasses. Good brother Shades. And we have. The party, the party pooper who poops on every single fucking party, the man of a thousand runes, the CEO of Zadari Enterprises, and the bane of my motherfucking existence, good brother Xanatrix. Happy to be <laughs> of service. I'm not. <laughs> <laughs> Woo! I can feel that rage from here. Woo! <laughs> God I think, damn! I think the last time you were able to feel ra rage coming from me was when a certain person didn't pay attention to my request, didn't pay attention to what I asked. <laughs> you know the whole thing of give me genres. He gives me Digimon and Doctor Who. <laughs> oh god, yeah. <laughs> That's a, those are genres. What? Yeah. Are you that, 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 um, Shades, you, you might you might want to give the rundown on what on how that went down. So basically, after we finished Rite of the Transformation, uh, during the after show, we, you know, Monk threw out, asked for suggestions on what we could do next. And he specifically said, I want to know what genres you want us to do. And one of our, I don't remember which one it was, but one of my fans piped up in the chat and specifically said Digimon and Doctor Who. And I'm, we all just looked at him and go, were you even listening? Were you even paying attention, motherfucker? <laughs> my, my, oh, he got my roasted over the hot coals for that one. <laughs> yeah, my response would have been, huh, when did a series become a genre? The show that will become a genre itself will be known as Cowboy Bebop. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> but, eh, but it is, it, it is, uh, it is, um, January 23rd, 23rd, um, and we, and we are. I'm hope. I'm hoping that most of us still aren't accidentally writing 2021 when we write dates onto things. Surprisingly, I haven't made that mistake yet. As I, I have to be very I precise have... in my day job. I have not written that at all. I've had one, I've had one or well two done. instances where in the fir in the first couple weeks of this month where it happens. But by this, when you're this late into the month, it eventually fades off. But E but either way, we are g we are and we are halfway through. We are more than halfway through the month of January. We'll be so there'll only be a few more opportunities to say "fuck you." It's January, <laughs> and instead we'll, instead we'll have to say "fuck you." It's February, and I'll have and I'll end up being pissed off again because February means Valentine's Day. <laughs> <laughs> hey, how the fuck do you think I feel? I was born in February. Yeah, but at least you can eat chocolate. Fair. Touche. And I I know I know that when I go when I go into work around that time I'm gonna see a bunch of I'm gonna see a bunch of Hershey's kisses and all and all that shit. Oh God. <laughs> now, now monk. I know the presence of chocolate itself pisses you off, but at least if none of your coworkers offer you any, you can feel a little. Relieved. Uh, Zan, have no, you I met monk's coworkers? <laughs> I already know the stories. <laughs> and I already know that there's at least one person there who will probably give him some really nice sugar cookies instead of chocolate. 
There is one person who will get who will give who will give me some nice who will give me some nice cookies, and she gives and she gives me um, orange cranberry cupcakes every week. Um, exactly. Oh. However, however, I know that I know that there is one person who will try and give who will try and give me something that is arguably worse than getting Valentine's chocolates. Sweethearts. <laughs> yeah, we... sour chalk. No, that's not even sour. I like sour. It's just chalk, just edible chalk. It's just chalk. It, it's just sugary chalk. It's it, it, that's what it is. It's just so strong a sugary chalk that it just tastes somewhat sour. I think the, the texture is fucking terrible. I think it only, is. It really only, is. I think the only people who would like it unironically are are the same are the same are the same crayon eaters who unir- who unironically like Sword Art Online. Oh! oh. I'm trying to, to to determine who's been insulted in this in this uh, particular uh, situation, but I think you've got it at the right level this time around. Hmm. At least it wasn't <laughs> like when you tried to compare, you know, toddlers to uh well, to some characters from a show. Yeah, that yeah, I yeah, I made that mistake earlier today and that was an insult to toddlers. Yep. <laughs> yeah. But <laughs> Now, uh, now, how about we get on with the show? Oh yes, yeah. Now, as as Freddie as Freddie Mercury once said, the show must go on. Now, all of us are fairly t- are fairly talkative. That's th- there's no doubt about that. But <laughs> we've had to, we've had to deal with several characters who in in our game in our gaming lives who are not as talkative as we are. In fact, so, in fact, we in fact sometimes it's preferable to. To not talk instead of talk instead of talk too much, but not ev- but not every character who is silent is created equal, and sometimes the question has to emerge whether that whether that si- whether that silence is narratively warranted, because the silent protagonist, which is what we're going to be talking about tonight in in the in the form of media in general and video games in particular. Is some is something that was was a ne- was a necessary deal for the longest time, but as time has gone on, has felt more like a crutch in some cases, and thus we ar- thus we arrive at this week's topic: speak up when protagonists shouldn't be silent. And as as you can see, we've got a good we've got a good amount of characters who are who could be considered silent protagonists in one form or another we have of course link we have we have rdm from the metro trilogy unless they end up making a fourth one i don't know about that yet probably will um gordon freeman corvo atano from dishonored and the eighth hero from dragon quest 8 i would argue that gordon freeman talks in crowbar clangs <laughs> um just, just putting this out of the way. When it comes to Gordon Freeman, the portrayal of him in Freeman's mind doesn't count. No. Although you should, no, although no, you no. should all go watch it because it is absolutely hilarious. Freeman's mind too is really well done as well. Mm-hmm. Um, you could also, you could also probably throw in Chell from Portal. That's a silent prota- That's a sort of silent protagonist of sorts. Well, I'll get in. I'll, there's, there's a couple subtypes of this sort of thing that I'll get, I'll get into in a moment. And one one might say, why is Artie okay. in this? He he does he does all those narrating dur- during the during the um during the loading screens in Metro 2033. This is true, but when it comes to actual gameplay, for all intents and purposes, he's a silent protagonist. And that and that leads to problems. We'll get we'll get into in a moment. Now. I think I think in I think with setting this kind of thing up there's two things that we need to establish. The character who d- who doesn't talk at all and the and the character who's meant to be a, who who you're meant to be filling the shoes in. And the player surrogate. Yeah. Now, uh-huh, uh-huh. An example of a player surrogate who is not a silent protagonist would be John 117, Master Chief. 
because while while he isn't go well, he isn't going to be as he, as talkative as certain other characters, he is still he is still um he is still a he is still a slate for the player to inhabit in some form. Actually, I think I can give you a better example of a player surrogate in this kind of scenario mm -hmm. that is talkative. Commander Shepard. I would I would certainly say that, and we've we've delved it we've delved into how um, how there's a bit of disconnect with with what they wanted to do in that front. But Back the general idea was that you decided how Kirk Commander Shepard was going to act based on your choices. So that that's probably the best example of a player surrogate that talks. I I I would argue it's only halfway there. Um, it's very clear that no matter which background or anything you choose, there is a there is a distinct thematic throughput for what, who Shepard is supposed to be, regardless of Paragon or Renegade. So, it's almost there, but not quite. I guess. Yeah, you're not wrong. I'm. Now, Still, point stands. <laughs> Moving on. Now, <clears throat> let. When it comes to this distinction, one thing that I think sh I think should be made clear is that I'd say I'd say with a lot I'd say with a lot of a lot of games, the reason for the longest time to use a silent protagonist was either was either because a was either because a um you had you had hardware limitations and no and not everybody could afford to have um voice lines bit crushed or could or could hire the services of John St. John or Stephen Waite. <laughs> <laughs> uh, although G although Gianni does a get does a good impression of John St. John, I will say that. Um and you but you also ha but in a lot of other cases there's the idea of the of the char the player character being a avatar for the player. And when it comes to but when it comes when it comes to this kind of thing, and this is the reason why I wanted to do this particular topic, as time has gone on, I've se I've seen plenty of stories where I have to ask myself, are you doing the are you doing this because it fits the story you want to tell, or are you doing this because it because it's a crutch, um, a tradition thing? And I've I've met I've made clear over the years. I do not care for tradition for its own sake. And I do want I use I do want to use um Gordon Freeman as an as an exam as an example of this kind of this kind of issue. Even though even though this is one of those things that can be up to interpretation. With the with the way Gordon is portrayed in Half Life. You obviously you don't know much. You don't know much about him aside him aside from him being a physicist working for Black Mesa and be, and being the wrong guy at the wrong place at the wrong time. But whether whether he's a good guy, whether he's completely nuts or th or the like, the answer to all that is yes. <laughs> With Half Life Two, the way it's presented. It's clear that they have. It's clear that the story has a bit has a bit more of an idea on what Gordon Freeman is supposed to be, especially given how people around you talk talk about you. But you, but unless you had, unless you had played the original, you're and even if you did play the original, you're kind of disconnected from that. Yeah, but I would argue that in universe that actually makes sense. Gordon, after defeating, uh, you know, the final boss in, in Half Life, Nylanth. and yes, like that name was on the the edge of my brain and I couldn't remember it. He, he's immediately scooped up and put in some sort of extra dimensional stasis by the G Man. Um, it, it and then you know a few years passes, so. They had time to build, like the people around uh, Earth had time to build up some mythological legend about him with nobody to refute it or confirm it. They just made the assumptions and ran with it. So that disconnect is actually narratively valid. I suppose it is. I think, I think the pro. I think the problem that I have with it in Half-Life 2, which I want to make I want to make clear, I don't have anything against 
Half-Life 2 is presentation. A lot, especially especially when it comes to the way the way conversations end up going, where char- where characters are speaking to you in a manner that one one would think there would be a na- there would be a natural response, and there isn't. But in that re- in that regard of that kind of disconnect, I'd say I'd say one of the other e- I'd say one of the other examples that we have on screen is a big is a bigger example of this disconnect issue. That being Corvo Atano from Dishonored. Yeah, that man should never have been a silent protagonist. He's very he's a very clearly influential figure, the consort of the Empress herself, and very skilled even without the magic of the outsider. Mm-hmm. So there's he he is definitely someone who would have an established persona. And I'd say that I'd say that's that's where the defi- that's where the dividing line is. When you ha- so let me ask you guys this: when you have a when you have a character who has some degree of an established backstory, should they be a, should they be a silent protagonist, or does that create a disconnect? Mm, I think for I the think most part, it would. But there are exceptions to this. I, I would say it's a matter of degrees. Yeah. Depends on how extensive and how connected that backstory is. Um, I know that we have Link as an example up on screen. There are plenty of Links where being a silent protagonist made perfect sense. Mm-hmm. But, but at the same time, there's times yes. where it didn't quite make sense for them to be like... I'd say... Um, Wind Waker would probably be one where he probably should have been a little more talkative. That's one. Um, and in fact, that's this one. Th- that's one. It, it, even even then, um, Majora's Mask. It's a personal journey for Link. You've oh, already absolutely. got the the establishment from Ocarina of Time, where he didn't really need to respond because he was just some kid raised in a forest who was thr- had uh, heroism thrust upon him. But now he's established, and he's looking for Navi. Mm-hmm. Like the whole thing is, he's looking for Navi yeah. and gets sucked into this this. Uh, he, he, he he has. He has an agency. He has agency. He has a desire. He actually has, you know, his own motive, a personal motivation to to move forward. Yeah. Yeah. And so you think he'd, you think he'd be asking, "Hey, have you seen a fairy around here?" <laughs> yeah. Honestly, and, I, when it comes to situ- when it comes to these kind of characters, I think one of the things you have to look for, if at any point the other the NPCs are asking the main character a question and then they make up a response. Like they immediately have a response, like "Oh, you said this," then you then you've automatically disqualified yourself from having a silent protagonist. I agree. Mm-hmm. I'd I'd say I when it comes to when it comes to um background and how I'd like to, one since I since I'm kind of on the notion of some Zeldas should some Zeldas should um some links should speak and some links um probably shouldn't. Where do you where would you say Skyward Sword fits into that dichotomy? Definitely needed to talk. Yeah, no, I agree. Definitely, um, definitely abs- needed to something there. He's, the relationship he's... between him and Zelda, and his connection, the relationship between him and Fi, uh, Fi. Like, there's a lot of times where it's like, why aren't you saying anything? Like, why? <laughs> the, the most. The most you had was to select things from a radial wheel when responding to Fi about things like, do you need me to find hearts so, since you're almost dead? Um, yeah. <laughs> and it's clear it's clear that at some point, um, Nintendo has started to see that maybe Link needs to be a more active agent in some of the games. Because in Breath of the Wild, you do get a few actual quote-unquote dialogue choices. Sure, they're not actually voiced, but it is you choosing what Link should say. Mm-hmm. Yeah. It's a start. Indeed. It's, and I think I think it's a, a pretty good one. Um, in in, a, in, ret- in a contrast, someone who is voiced in every game but maybe shouldn't be, uh, Mario... Yeah, there, there are some games where he could he could benefit from not having to respond to anybody. Um, okay, in that in that regard, I want I want to throw I want to throw a few games in I want to throw a few games into the into the mix and see see where you guys fall where you guys fall on that front. Um, 
Odyssey. All right. Super Mario Odyssey, he he did talk and he should have talked. Um, yeah. Like, his, no, his talking was mostly like nodding his head at Cappy and stuff, but it's still a response that you can visually see that is separate from using Mario as a, as a player insert. Um, and considering the story of Super Mario Odyssey, that's absolutely necessary. Okay. Um, both of the Galaxy games. I don't think he needed to say anything. Um, no, there really wasn't any instance where uh, have, having him respond would have really added anything. So I think that one was fine to keep him silent. Right. Well, and, and then on top of that, um, both Odysseys are kind of framed as a someone well like i mean both galaxies uh the first galaxy is definitely framed as someone telling a story and the second galaxy is kind of sort of tangential to it so it, it, since he's a character that someone else is talking about in a story and only really talking about his actions um it makes sense that he didn't really say much mm -hmm. now in the I'd say the la the last one that I want to throw into into that regarding Mario is Sunshine. He absolutely needed to talk. It, it, the very least at the beginning, like during you know having him defend himself during the trial, I think he should have spoke up at that point. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it, 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 him being it's unable to. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, you'll never hear that in a Nintendo game. But something, something like <laughs> protesting his innocence. I just got here. We just arrived. There's no way I could have done that. You know. Well, we have you dead to rights here. And then, even then, um, because of Peach being major airhead in Sunshine, Mama Peach, I'm his mama. What? No, you are not. It is very clear you are not Bowser Jr.'s mother. Peach, what are you smoking? But, uh... <laughs> the, the, um... Like, because of how airheaded she is, having her to bounce off of when he's like, we just got here, I'm defending myself, it couldn't have been me. Then even Peach could have looked at him strangely and been like, was it you, Mario? And Mario could have given her... Like it would have been one of the biggest uh, gaps. You could have even done a, a, a traditional Mario face plant for that, and it would have been great. Mm -hmm. Would have made super. Uh, would have made Sunshine a little more endearing. That's for sure. Yeah, it wouldn't it wouldn't have fi it wouldn't have fixed a lot of the problems that the game the game has, Name namely the, namely the uh, namely all the glitches to the point where I'm I'm pretty I'm pretty sure I'm pretty sure that it that um there are more glitch run there are more glitch runs of Mario Sunshine than there are glitch list runs if I look on if I look on um speedrun.com. Oh yeah. Um, but I mean if you look at any Mario that's the case. Glitch runs are faster and more entertaining. Although I, I will my favorite my favorite my favorite glitch will always be the will always be the um the tightrope glitch. <laughs> you know, ab abuse, you know, abuse the abuse the rocket flood, then get let yourself get hit by one of the wind sprites, and you will go up so goddamn high that you can that you can see everything. <laughs> I can see the future. <laughs> Sounds like they just took a bunch of DMT. But that that also. That also brings me to um some, to something like Dragon Quest. And to be fit to be fair, with the with the early with the early days of with the early days of Dragon Quest, um, it is completely understandable to be a silent protagonist because Dragon Quest was following into the in, in the footsteps of wizardry. And if you look at the first two Dragon Quest, it very much it very much still has a bit of PC DNA in it. Dragon Quest, so, we know it doesn't really start until, I'd say, 3. And I would say that getting rid of the silent protagonists shouldn't start until 4, because 4 through 6 was an in was that technically an interconnected story. Yeah, it was. It was a whole trilogy. Mm -hmm. And those heroes definitely should have been able to talk. They would have been well-established in their world. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Everyone else talked. Why couldn't they? And 
even even in more now with with some with some of them i'd ha i'd have a i'd have a bit more of a bit more of an issue of of whether or not that should be a thing like say um seven not so not so much eight honest honestly eight honestly eight i feel like i feel like the trend should have been broken by then i mean i'm gonna be honest uh i've I played eight through a few times, and I can think of some. <laughs> I can think of a few moments, even at the very beginning of the game, where the heroes definitely should have been saying something. Especially when you consider the background of the hero in eight. Is yeah. I think I think that the silent protagonist works at it works at its best. When your protagonist is something of an everyman, as, as we've seen in the past, um, Corvo Atano is not an everyman. Um, no. Gor Gordon Freeman, everymanness is deb is debate is debatable, um, but there's but there's nothing that really set. But aside from being in better shape, there's nothing that separates him from the other scientists on Black Mesa. Um, in better shape and somehow trained in firearms, lots of them. <laughs> um, Art Artyom is a is a is a ranger in the metro. Started off as a ranger in training, then became a ranger pro then became a ranger proper. Plus, there's the whole relationship with him and Anna, which is which is why the way they treat the way he's treated as a silent protagonist in that instance does is egregious. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Oh. And as for, now, I do remember fielding this question to some other people I know, and and somebody asked, "Would I have?" And somebody asked, "Would I have?" Um, would I have Fisk talk in Undertale? No. 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 I was actually going to bring them up at some point because I kind of had to. It's my it's my territory. Mm -hmm. It's my game. But yeah, Frisk. The whole like they established they put it in such a way that Frisk doesn't like, have to respond to anybody. And you, you, the only time you actually interact is during the fights, during the fights, which you do technically say something to them, but you don't need to have specifics. Mm -hmm. During the actual dialogue scenes, no, they pretty much don't have any point where speaking there's, up would have changed anything. There's one dialogue scene. There's one dialogue scene where speaking up ch changes things. And we're all talking about my date with the boy Papyrus. <laughs> okay, I can kind of see that, yeah. <laughs> Now, if if you want to talk about an RPG where having the main protagonist speak up would have probably been helpful, I want to throw out a I want to throw out one for you. Shoot, Chrono Trigger. Honestly, dude, I was just about to say that. <laughs> like, I can def I can definitely see it just from how just from how distinctive um, Chrono's appearance is alone. Yeah, but just like there's several scenes where it's very clear he's trying to say something and you don't hear anything, and the the cast, the rest of the characters are responding to something he's doing, or something he's supposedly saying. Whenever you have one of those kind of moments, why are you making him silent? Mm -hmm. I, again, I say that you, as soon as you have characters responding to something he's supposedly saying, you no longer have a silent protagonist. Don't make him one. There is there is one other, there is one other franchise that that has aside from one game has t has taken has taken the silent protagonist route and I never understood why. And that is Suikoden. Yeah. Suikoden never needed silent protagonists of any type. And when you um. consider the, when you consider the protagonists in a lot of the games it doesn't make sense to use them because they're not everyman not only are they not everyman uh, for those of us in the know about uh wishya and uh what those stories that it comes from mean mm -hmm. all of those characters are distinct they're they're established and turning them into uh, turning one of them into a silent protagonist is doing them all a great disservice. Yeah, and I can think of another. I, I sorry, good. Um, just well, I can think of an. I can. 
I can think of another. Uh, <laughs> I gotta say something. I never say anything <laughs> in these things. Uh, <laughs> uh, another place where a silent protagonist is actually well established: the Pokemon series, the Pokemon main ge- uh, main series of games. You're basically nothing but a silent prota- silent protagonist because you are literally a player proxy, a, pl- uh, a player. Yeah. What do you call it? Yeah. Player sir. It doesn't matter. Who, mm-hmm. A player. A yeah. player surrogate. Yeah. Yeah. You're just yeah. So that's that's an example of like a, a sil- of a completely silent uh, player char- player character more than early, anything. Early on, sure, but as you get further in the games, um, it's very clear that people start having like I would say with what little I played of X and Y, uh, the protagonist of X and Y should not be silent. The, the people who respond to you do respond to you as if you are saying things. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Uh-huh. So early on, it, it worked. And again, that's probably, as we mentioned earlier, part of uh, technical limitation. But as technical limitations fell by the wayside and, uh, for better or for worse, the plots and stories of Pokemon evolved to include, we're going to reset the fucking universe! <laughs> what the fuck, Pokemon? <laughs> We're gonna capture God and make him reset the universe. Fuck you, Pokemon. That's... I just, I just want to be a ten-year-old catching monsters. Eat shit. <laughs> but uh, <laughs> it, beyond beyond all that, um, there there comes a point even in Pokemon's life cycle where main characters should no longer be, uh, should no longer silent. be silent. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Just as a bit of a whim to t- to touch on when it comes to um when it comes when it comes to when it comes to um Suikoden, um cons- consider this the the fur the each of the each of the pro- each of those protagonists has it has a has a given name and. In the first one, Tyr McDull is the is the son is the son of Te- of Teo McDull, who 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 is a man who is a man of renown within the Scarlet Moon Empire. He's he's one of the royal guard. And you you already have you already you already have a relationship with other characters, and with and um, with the normalcy that'll that'll be t- that'll be taken from you. Um. Rio in C- in Su- in um, two was already already was a already was a soldier at the start at the start of it. Um, Hugo in three the only the the only game that didn't have the Tenkai star be the protagonist is is supposed to be the flame champion, which obviously has obviously has its own responsibilities. Um, Rosaro in in four. Has his own sh- event. You eventually get you get your own ship very very early on, and you're you're already you're already a companion to them to re- to Raziel's, sorry, Ra- Razri um, mayor, um, Vin- Vincent Vingerhut. Um, in five, you're a prince. Freador I- Freador is a pr- is a prince. Sieg is the only Sieg is the only one that talked, but Tearcrease is a, is a spinoff. And but you didn't your protagonist didn't talk in tactics either. And the point is with each of these, you're in you're in a social position where you where you can't claim to be a surrogate, you can't claim to be a um, avatar character. The character has a back has a backstory and has something to build around when it comes to relationships. Yeah. And that's and that's true of not just the main character, but literally every party character. Again, like I said, since it's originally based off of a Wisha novel, everyone is established. Mm-hmm. Now, that br- that brings us to that that brings me to an interesting one that I can I can go either I can go either way on. And that is the that is um, the various games in the Mega Ten series. 
Now, obvious, obviously, there's been a bunch of spinoffs when it comes to Mega Ten, but I want to focus on three avenues in particular. The core Mega Ten games, the, um, the Digital Devil Saga, and Persona. So I'll, I'll start with the core ones. Do you think... Do you think that the prota do you think that the protagonist in the core Shin Megami Tensei games should, has ever had a a um, game in that in, in that series where they should have been speaking? Uh, Shin Shin Mega Ten, not particularly. I think it gets along well without it, without voice. I think um maybe Mega Ten Five. Five, I, five. I could, de I could definitely see, especially given the complicated relationship that you have with your other half. Um, but but beyond, but beyond that, I and beyond that, because you know, in most games, it takes place with school age kids. It, it, you really are pulling from every man at that point. Yeah. I think I think mm. there's also the there's also the fact that there's always been the theme of multiple factions in a post-apocalypse and you having to choose a, a side. However, when it however when it comes to when it comes to some of the spin-offs, that's where things get a little murky. I still yeah. haven't played If, I don't even know if that's been translated, so I'm pushing that off to the side. But when it comes to the when it, com when it comes to the Raido Kusunoha and end of the Devil Summoner series, he absolutely should have spoke. Yes. Digital, the Digital Devil uh, Saga stuff uh, it is a lot more personal. Um, I would... Well, I can't see a reason that most of them were, were uh, silent. There should have been speech from most of them. Um, surf... Was, is the is the leader of a fa of a faction within Junkyard, and e and everybody and um a lot of the a lot of the other characters in that were were you're sen you're essentially you're essentially um soldier soldiers in a area where it's always ra where it's always raining all the goddamn time. It's like a post apocalyptic Seattle. So the opposite of Mad Max. <laughs> <laughs> And yes, there yes, there's um, revelations about about the junkyard late later on. But I really, even though the statute is technically passed, I really don't want to get into spoilers when it comes to Digital Devil Saga. Largely, largely because going explaining some of the revelations would um, get us on the rails, and also more people need to play that and that duology as it is. But when it but when it comes mm -hmm. to Persona, um, the, with some of the early ones, not not um not as much. But starting I, at three, starting at three, they should have talked. I'd, I'd even it, say start. You talked yeah, in two, they've... so I can't so, so I can't go with that one. No three, you that's debatable three because of how the story was set up and how three the is. Says. <laughs> Mm -mm. Three is well. Yeah, the whole idea, even in the movies, when they adapted P three for the movies, they they even had a difficulty of giving the character a voice because the whole the whole zenith of P 3s protagonist is that he is um, completely apathetic to everything. He has yeah. no person. He has no personality. So the, the, it's, the he's he's more. He, it, it was it was open for the player to imprint on him. The, well, the the problem there though is that. Um, it, the, the clear, the, we now have a, what's known as the, um, ludonarrative disconnect, mm -hmm. ludonarrative dissonance, the, 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 the gap between story and gameplay and gameplay's encouragement was manage your time to increase your skills, to become friends with everyone. Yes. When you have a character whose sole purpose beyond the actual combat portion of the game is to become friends with everyone, you cannot have a silent protag. Uh, definitely, can't. I would. I I would agree, uh, especially in number four, 
and very especially in number five. Yeah, four and five, there is no debate. They, like even for especially for the the anime adaptations, even had to give them a voice and character because of the fact that the games were silent protagonists, it didn't make sense because of how connected you were with everyone in the cast. It just it, like those games, it made no fucking sense. Well, a silent protagonist what, what, also doesn't make any sense for um, Persona Three Fez and the way uh, Aegis treats you. I hate that people call her Aegis. It is very clear that her name is supposed to be Aegis, as in the Grecian shield. Fuck you all. Mm-hmm. <laughs> <laughs> what were you about? What were you about to say, JT? Oh no! No, I, I, I was, I, I completely, I completely agree. But I was going to say is they even give you dialogue options, you know, to respond to characters with. So, yeah. you know, why there? It's right there in front of you. There you go. Well, so, I, I honestly, I think that's the crux of why they didn't get make them a why they made them a silent protagonist because having to record or at the very least make that kind of dialogue for all those lines. And all those scenarios, when those games are already massive as it is, I can see the needing to take a shortcut or two. Even yeah. if I don't like it, I kind of understand it. Here's here's my here's my counter to that. Persona Four, a catchy, uh, or um, Adachi and um, and the protagonist are both voiced by the same person because they're supposed to be reflections of each other. The voices we get from Narukami Yu, I believe, is his official name at this point. Narukami. Yep. Yep. It, it are yes, yes. Persona or other such sound bites for combat. And no. Adachi is fully voiced. That's ha- not the point I was trying to make, Zan. What I'm saying is if they had to make dialogue and voice and, and talk like not only do you have to voice it, it, but you'd have to create dialogue for all the responses to the rest of the cast, for all of those scenarios, the social links, the mini side stories, and everything, not to mention the main story, that amount of extra dialogue would have inflated the game even bigger than it already was. I'm willing to I'm willing to give Persona 4 a bit of a, a bit of a pass because they were put they were they were pushing what they're pushing what they could stuff into the PS2 to its to its absolute limits at that point. But Persona Five, on the other hand, that I'm not willing to bend on. Yeah, no, I, I'll give you no. that. I'll give you that. P Five needed more. P Five could have easily gone very well with dialogue, especially get because you know, because you because you're a, you're a very established character right from the very beginning. You're uh you're a kid with a criminal record, at, you know, uh, undeservedly undeservedly so from being in the wrong place at the wrong time and trying to do a good deed that did not go on un- un- did not go unpunished and you are literally uh, a pariah in society that has to dig his way out of social exile and prove to the rest of the world prove to the people around him that he's really just a good guy don't judge me by what ha- by the circumstances of what I got in- got into and, and 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 that's literally you know the whole crux of you know making friends and changing people's perspective of you for for that kind of characterization you absolutely need some dialogue need di- need a uns- unsilent you know a talkative uh, protagonist to advance the uh, advance the ner- advance the development away from uh, what's established in the beginning there i said it. <laughs> there's also there's also the fact that Unlike unlike a lot of unlike a lot of the other um, ca- the other characters who the att- the attempt the attempt at if you look at three four and five the uh, the attempt at having a every man like a every man like appearance and and background has been weaker and weaker as time has gone on with three you with three it characters. has with each with each just, go ahead just look at just. Putting putting aside story, putting aside all that, just look at the just look at the character design of of um of the protagonist in th- in three, four, and five. Three was very was very much designed. Even the art director said so for a far for a far more ambig a far more um, ambiguous setup. 
In fact, that was the reason why they did the hair over one eye motif with that character. Um, with four, the oh, while while it may it may seem that they're, that they're still trying to do that, the fact the fact that you are the fact and the fact that you're someone who is ju who is who is a sit who is a city kid moving out into moving out into the country. Um, but even even with that, you ha you have you have some degree of a fi of a family structure. You're not just you're not just a you're not just a lone guy. Oh um, yeah. And in five, just in just in the way all the reason all the reasons I, all the reasons I just described. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, the way the way you the way you the way he carries himself, the way he moves, the way he the way the way he emotes, even w even without dialogue. It en it ends up co it especially given the fact that you have those long scenes of uh, of you being interrogated. There is very little reason why you why you should have been silent. Yeah, it, it's a well it it's it's a well it, it's it's a lot of visual characterization with P5's protag with P5's protagonist. Mm -hmm. I mean he. Uh, it's you know you can you can see who your character is just like for all the reasons you described how he carries himself how he moves p 5s protagonist is a smooth motherfucker when yeah. by the end of the game smooth so, and ruthless but, yeah. <laughs> yeah yeah that yeah. smile does not say anything but you're fucked mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> those glasses hide his true nature <laughs> the there's also there's also if you if you look through the way the way dialogue is the way dialogue is handled when it comes when it comes to in-game, there's very much there very much seems to be the vibe of of the, of this is a per this is a person who will pl will play along while he while he furthers his own plans whenever <clears throat> he's in any discussion with people. And there's been there's been a lot of anal there's been a lot of analogy to the clever cat with with him. It certainly doesn't hurt that one of your companions is a friggin' cat. Who keeps, <laughs> you to, who keeps telling you to go to sleep? No, I will not go to sleep, Morgana. <laughs> Although, as an as an aside, it, it did. Screw you, really... screw you, cat! I have so I have a social life to manage. Although it did it did make me laugh when when Morgana's voice actress decided to do a reading of "Go the fuck to sleep" in the <laughs> <Morgana> voice. <laughs> <laughs> well, it doesn't help that yeah, you know, Cassandra Lee Morris is also the voice of Ty Taiga Asaka from Toradora, mm -hmm. so you gotta have that bitchiness right there, perfectly set up for that. <laughs> yeah. Oi, oi. <laughs> I think the I think the only better, obviously, the best reading of that book is Samuel L. Motherfucking Jackson, but a close second would be Lavar Burton's reading of it. <laughs> just the, just the juxtaposition of it all. <laughs> Yeah, well, trust me. When when Levar Burton is reading "Go the Fuck to Sleep" in his reading rainbow voice, it is sublime. <laughs> it, does, it doesn't exactly hurt that everybody everybody on stage at R at RTX was play was playing along with it. <laughs> oh, yeah. um, which makes me wonder what which makes me wonder what it would sound like if you had Christopher Walken read it. Oh God, no! I don't oh, think the universe can handle that. Remember Does he have a cameo? Have... No, I don't think so. And I and I'm pretty sure if he did, it'd be an expensive as fuck. I'm gonna check. Free tip: <laughs> If you want, if you don't want to sleep, if you don't want to sleep tonight, look up the, uh, Christopher Walken reads The Raven on uh, YouTube. You will not sleep. <laughs> I have I have seen it... I have seen that I have seen that plenty of times, and it works too well. Um, of course, there's the old classic of him reading The Three Little Pigs, but Getting getting back on getting back onto the onto the matter of things. Back on subject. Um. Since we we we've picked on we've picked on one by Bio, one Bioware franchise that it, that we liked until it pissed us off, I think we should pick on another. So, I'd like you to cast your mind to Dragon Age Origins and 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 um ask the ask the question: Should the warden have spoken? Especially yes. since the warden does speak when he sh when the war when he shows up in actually no he didn't show up in Inquisition what am I talking about? No, it's Morgan who speaks on his or her behalf if you're if you've had that romance or connection. Yeah. 
but when but when they did oh. when they did Hawk, they they had they had him, they had him <coughs> or her speak. And if I'm be the argument that I the argument that I've heard against the idea of having the warden speak is because is because of all the different voice lines that they that they'd have to do because of the origin system. I don't agree with this. Largely largely because of the fact that you already ha that within that or that there aren't enough unique origins to re to really justify that. Well, now Monk, this this comes to the point of are we looking at silent protagonist as in it's just an unvoiced character? Because in Dragon Age Origins, you make a lot of dialogue choices for the Warden. He does talk, or she does talk, a lot. You don't hear the lines, but they're there. You select them. You yeah, you that, are making those choices. That's what that is. What that is why it's a bit borderline. If if I'm being honest, um, I think a lot of people have said this. Maybe maybe it should have been considered given the direction that Bioware was moving in around that time, and the fact that this came that this came out after the original Mass Effect. Mm -hmm. uh, and granted, a, lo a lot of that is due to the long, long development time that Dragon Age Origins had. Yeah. So, in, in this case, we're not looking at it as an actual, this person doesn't respond and really should in this situation, but rather, this role should have had voices. Yeah. Okay. Uh, I, I did want to make sure that we had that distinction, mm -hmm. because... Some people think of silent protagonist only as someone who does not respond in universe. Yeah. Now, when it comes when it comes to when it comes to certain when it comes to certain shooters over the years, um, I've seen I've seen some I've seen some people say, say that the say that um it was a, it was a bad move for the for to give the Doom Slayer a couple of a couple of lines in Doom Eternal and then later on in the ancient gods except in those in those particular situations there's there's a much better in universe reason why he why he why he talks so little mhm mm you know putting aside the fact that he that do, that eternal confirmed that the doom slayer and the old doom guy are the same person Rip and tear. There is al there is also the fact that in Doom sixty four, there is the, there is the manual there is the implication in the manual and in so in some bits of um d of dialogue that going going back and forth into hell so many times really fucked with his head. If we go by the story as established by Doom Eternal. When he first gets to, um, the citadel, the, you know the, the citadel, and you get the flashbacks, mm -hmm. or not the citadel, the um, um, I know what I'm talking about. The you're thinking of Sentinel Prime. Yes, Sentinel Prime, Sentinel Citadel. They're very similar words. Um, and you have those flashbacks when they first found him. He was completely fucking mad. He rambled incoherently, and he beat their Colosseum through sheer force of will and barbarism. He took time to recover from that. The, the Doom Slayer you play in Doom Eternal is not the crazy Doom guy from those flashbacks. He's very, very purposeful and skilled and has a very distinct goal in mind, and that's Fuck everyone who fucked Earth. Mm -hmm. And so he 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 did have his head fucked with, and he recovered and became a blade because of it. Mm -hmm. Now, when it com when it comes to when it, came, when it comes to when it comes to a lot of um, when it comes to a lot of games that do that. Do that. Do silent protagonists? I, th I do think that the backstory, th the backstory question is is something that should be, should be taken into consideration. Um, you have, se 
the reason why I've, the reason why I argued reg regarding um, regarding Dragon Age Origins is the importance of the decisions that you make uh, thr throughout it throughout its run. Plus, some um, in in Dragon Age Two and in Dragon Age Inquisition, you d you're def you're definitely going to be speaking for understandable reasons. In two, in two, you're you're dealing with what's supposed to be the story the story of a of a of a refugee becoming the champion of Kirkwall. At least that was the intent, and probably would probably would have happened if the game didn't if the game didn't have such a rush job. Hmm. Um, and with Inquisition, well, you're re you're restarting the you're restarting the Inquisition. That's get that's gonna be that's gonna be a big fucking deal for for everybody involved. Um, but I'd say, but even even when it comes to characters who are who are who are silent, um, like in say like in say MMOs, there's a right way and a wrong way to do it, which is what we kind of dipped into when we talked when we talked about from Azeroth to Hydaelyn. Is the is the fact is the difference between how your character is portrayed, like you get your people people in WoW people talk to you with all these titles when they when they really sh when they really shouldn't, even to, or or talk or talk to you or talk about you but not to you, even if it's characters who you've met several times. And. Grant, granted, there's no there's no way you can get away with voice dialogue in an MMO as the Old Republic taught us, unless you want unless you want to spend an ass load of money on something that isn't going to work, and is go and is going to result in false choice. <laughs> but consider consider how the Warrior of Light is treated in FF14. Yeah. Where are you? Um, Go ahead. Well, and this is again the whole um, the character has dialogue that's just not voiced situation. Um, you very clearly choose things, and they even have animations for talking. Um, but in this respect, I think this is a limitation of MMO. Um, every Warrior of Light is going to be somehow different. Even if some designs ape others, um, every warrior of light would have to have a different voice. They have an entire voice palette selection for, you know, the the types of sounds you'll make in battle. Essentially, your your jump sounds, your your attack sounds, your damage sounds, etc. Mm -hmm. The same thing that you would see in any game with a large character creator. Having each and every one of those voices. For all potential lines that your warrior of light could speak, wouldn't just be a data bloat of epic proportions, because it would be. That's a huge amount of audio data. Mm -hmm. It'd be prohibitively expensive. That's a lot of actors you have to pay for a lot of lines. Pretty much. Now... As far, now, as far as far as as far as why we have such an issue with silent protagonists who shouldn't be, it's it largely has to do with what you mentioned earlier, ludo narrative dissonance. When you have when you have a story that clearly has a character going through a going through a certain arc, instead of the instead of say the world going through an arc, you can have that you can have that dissonance, and it's and. Video games are a unique medium, unlike others, because of the Im because of the immersion that you can get through them, that you can't get through other mediums. Mm -hmm. Which is probably the reason why the I'd say the only time another a non interactive medium tried to use the silent protagonist idea you have th you, was in some of those really bad choose your own adventure style FMVs that ha that have gone the way of the dodo. <laughs> um, as as easy it is to mock those those FMVs as I, as I had a few of them during the '90s, like Who Killed Sam Rupert. Um, they're a glorified gimmick. 
it's basically trying to take the choose your own adventure style book and turn and put it in video form. That's what that's what that's trying to do. And if I'm being honest, that kind of thing belongs in it belongs in a book more than anything else. Yeah. Now, <clears throat> obvious, obviously, when it comes to the when it comes to the Souls games, the protagonist in those should de should definitely be silent. But I but um, where even though he even though he has a few even though he has a few lines, would you have given? What, what, where would you would would you have um kept would you have kept Sekiro, having having the same amount of lines that he does? Yes. Um, his his entire thing is an intense determination to protect his ward, even from his own adoptive father and everyone else that would threaten him, even from people who would have employed him or otherwise kept him. Mm -hmm. His his lax his his lax social skills let's put it that way to lightly mm -hmm. are uh -huh. def a defining trait of a man who stands in shadows and stands guard he doesn't get a chance to talk to people much the only person that really talks to him is kudo and so the fact that he only responds very little to everyone else even the Tengu when he first meets him, even Ishin Ashino when he first meets him. Yes, those are two separate characters. Fuck you all pointing out in the comments or wherever you might be listening. Ishin Ashino and the Tengu are the same. No, they're two separate characters, the same person. Um when he when he is silent meeting so many people, or all he does is raise his sword or take a, def a defiant stance. Those are poignant when he takes something that is a very obvious action because he is shinobi he is ninja he is someone who is supposed to attack from the shadows and never be seen so when he takes such an open and obvious action whether that's speaking or whether that's raising his sword against owl mm -hmm. um that that's a huge thing for the context so keeping him as compact as he was vocally and is actually a good storytelling device. Now I'd say I was I was going to bring up um I was going to bring up Fire Emblem but I think I I don't think Fire Emblem has ever has ever dipped into a silent protagonist all that much. No, every every lord you play uh, is definitely voiced in talks and has a character. Yeah. Whether it's before there was actual voice work or once we actually got voice work. But when it comes to Dragon Quest, and I just I just I just ended up realizing this. If you if you want a if you want a case in point when it comes to the reason why why future Dragon Quest heroes probably should consider speaking, consider the Dragon Quest Heroes games. Especially two. Mm -hmm. And if you don't want to consider spinoffs, just consider um, is it DQ10 that has uh, what's his name? The hero that was actually the primary hero for uh, the expansion on Smash. Um, I believe ten was an MMO. Oh no! So Dragon Quest Eleven, mm -hmm. yeah. Dra consider this guy. What is his title in the game? Uh, hang on, hang on. Let me. I don't remember his title, but it's something big and important. Well, well, one of the other one of the other thing is that he is that he is the reincarnation of a past hero. That too. Um. Um. He, he's called the Luminary. Yeah. That that sort of title is not an everyman title. That is not a title you give to someone that anyone can step into the shoes of. 
The luminary should have been voiced. Absolutely. <laughs> because holy shit. You're a reincarnation of a past hero, so you're already destined to save the world from one. <sighs> that that alone is something that would make you need to be voiced. Your your personality is going to affect how you reflect on saving the world. And so keeping him as an audience stand-in as most of the Dragon Quest heroes have attempted to do over the years is just so misguided. I do think it's kind of funny that the the most recent Dragon Quest game that I've that I've heard being worked on is based on the Adventure of Dai anime. Where you get where and Dai obviously is not a silent protagonist. And hell, if we hell, if we want to if we want to bring that kind of thing up, let's bring up the fact that, um, in a in a weird roundabout way, the Blue Dragon anime does a better job of being Blue Dragon than the video game does, because <laughs> of the fact that its protagonist isn't isn't silent. Yeah, absolutely. And I'd say when I'd say it's, the fun the funny thing is is that a, a lot of people whenever I bring up this whole notion of silent protagonists and audience surrogate kind of things, for whatever reason, some people bring up the protagonists that are used in visual novels, and I'm like, do you have any idea how much inner dialogue those characters have? They they are they are the if anything, those characters em end up demonstrating our point. I mean, yeah. I mean, the, the, the what's really funny is that this is the um, the uh, paradoxical dichotomy of the visual novel protag. Mm -hmm. um, on the one hand, for most visual novels, you're kind of doing wish fulfillment, and you want to have th someone that everyone can relate to, so they can insert themselves into the VN. And then on the other hand, the VN main character has a fuck ton of internal monologue. So now you're being directed on how you should be thinking in the situation. It is the biggest paradox of visual novels. And it is why when I stress what a visual novel is to people, I stress that the operative word is NOVEL! <laughs> you're reading a book with scenes of anime. And music and voices. It's all it is. It's a giant interactive audiobook. <laughs> so, yes, it absolutely demonstrates our point that these are not actually silent protagonists. And they even have dialogue in these games. They're just not voiced. Yeah. Again. Um, side note, my favorite, my, probably my favorite uh, example of a visual novel main character that just cannot be a self-insert... <laughs> Yuji from uh from Fruits of Grisaya. I haven't I haven't gone through that, so I can't comment too much. He's a trained child soldier assassin. <laughs> There's that is not a self insert character, monk. No. Uh, not unless you're really <laughs> fucked in the head. Not that unless a power fantasy if I've ever heard one. It is a power fantasy, especially considering that you can get with one of the girls, and they're all very attractive in their own ways. Oh. But <laughs> let me let me let me tell you what type of childhood you need to be this guy. Do you know who the self who this is a self insert for? Yuji is a, could only be a self insert for one character, and he's also fictional. It's time for Jack to let her rip. <laughs> Yeah, I, I how do, I knew that's where you were going with this. How the fuck did I not see that? How the fuck did I not see that coming? So yes, visual novel heroes absolutely are not voiceless silent protagonists. Mm -hmm. But they are in some fashion at, at least or at least attempt to be an audience surrogate. Yeah. And since we've danced around that term, I think we I think we should establish the 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 um benefits and pitfalls the merits and pitfalls I should say of the concept of an audience surrogate it is very much meant to be a character that that the audience can place that can place themselves in or it 
it from a from either a direct manner, i.e., the i.e. they're the protagonist, or an indirect manner, i.e. they're so, they're somebody who has to have the bigger picture of the setting explained to them. An example of the latter, and I brought this up on sa on Saturday, is Wasp from Avengers EMH. Yes. Uh, yeah. Um. She's not. She's obviously not a blank slate, but on some on some levels, she is meant to be the audience surrogate. She doesn't have all of the information and has to be filled in. Mm -hmm. Yeah. It, and it, the, I think the more, <clears throat> um, I think, uh, well, let's go back to Final Fantasy fourteen. The Warrior of Light is a is the direct version of this. They're an audience surrogate because of the fact that everything does need to be explained for them. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's how they get you into the world of the MMO in the first place. Um, but it's also a case of you decide how they act and in every shape, way, shape, and form. Well, that's the uh, that's the point of the former is that you are the player, you are the character, you decide how your story goes. Yes. Whereas and, a sim the, the latter is more of a case of yeah, they're somewhat of an established character, but they are the ones that you use to understand because like in a situation where everyone's established. They should already know what's going on. But yes. if there's somebody that doesn't, then they're the ones that you can use to use a surrogate to say, okay, here's the world building, here's the story, here's what's happening. Yeah, this is this is going to be your transfer students in the new year sort of situation. Um, exactly. Which is, which is why, again, when you have to have the world explained to you in games like RPGs, um, most of the characters either come from a background where they wouldn't know more about the lighter world, or they're transferring from a setting into a setting they've never been in. Um, a good example being, again, Persona 4, Persona 5, transferring yeah. into a place where they've never been and in a situation they've never been in, so things do get drip-fed to them. In that regard, it's understandable why Isekai became such, became such a reliable motif. Yeah, because it's um, very easy to plant somebody into a new setting and then be the audience surrogate in that regard. This is like, of course they don't know what's going on here. They're coming from another fucking world. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and when done correctly, it's really good. Um, we we here at the monastery do not deny that Isekai has well exploded, <laughs> and there's somewhat of an oversaturation. Oh, yes. Oh, Inclu absolutely. Including uh, with ridiculous concepts like reincarnating as a fucking vending machine. <laughs> <laughs> I hate that goddamn light novel's existence, but it's actually a good fucking story, and I hate that I have to admit that. <laughs> but... Even the devil has to give the devil its due. Yes. <laughs> yes, I do. But... The, the the isekai genre is so successful because it can take familiar people and familiar mindsets and put them into unfamiliar circumstances so easily. It is a vital and visceral sort of escapism. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. that's part of entertainment. Escaping! <laughs> Which is, I think, ultimately yeah. why... When a silent protagonist hits wrong, that ludonarrative disconnect, that cognitive dissonance that you feel, detracts. It reduces your escapism and your enjoyment of your medium. Mm -hmm. And significantly at that. Yeah. <laughs> uh, I haven't. I haven't gone. Th I ha I've yet to go through Deltarune, but from but I think I think that I think that at the very least, from what I've seen of it. From chapter one and two, it is doing a spin that it that um doesn't break our rules, but is certainly be is certainly bending it in a interesting manner. Toby Fox is the kind of guy he under like. If there's one thing I've learned about Toby Fox and his game design, he understands the tropes, mm -hmm. and he understands what they're for and how they work, which is why he uses them. And put and puts a spin on them. He always likes to twit put play play with those rules and those mechanics and those and those motifs to tell his story. Like, yeah, 
his characters are silent, but he ta- he plays with that idea to kind of add to the narrative. I mean, the fact that a whole, one of the big points of the original Undertale was that game mechanics were also story mechanics. Mm-hmm. That's that's a big you know that's something that no very few games have honestly done, and especially few have done properly. Mm-hmm. So. If he's using a silent protagonist, there's probably a reason for it. And in the ki- in the case of um of Deltarune, this is a, this is an I don't want I don't want to spoil too much because it does technically fall within the statute. But yeah, we'll... actually, I can make this simple for you to explain why how it works without spoiling anything. One of the key things about Deltarune is that you don't get a choice in what you're, you know, you get dialogue choices, but unlike Undertale where your choices mattered significantly, one of the key things about Deltarune is that the opposite is true. None of your choices matter. Mm. But in a way, in a way that narratively makes sense. Exactly. Like it, from the outset, you, you know this. This without getting into the actual story, the beginning of Delta Rune Chapter One started with a survey, where you were supposed to create your main character. You built. You had to choose everything: the hairstyle they had, the the ticket, their their face type, what kind of shirt they wore, what kind of shoes they wore. You would gain their name, their certain attributes, certain uh, their, their blood type, everything like that. And at the end. Who the mysterious being, most likely Gaster, takes all that and says, "Nope, we're not using any of that. <laughs> we just wasted your goddamn time. None of that matters because we're using Chris instead." <laughs> now, with I do, there is one other. There is. I just realized that there is one other Bioware entry that I should that I should have brought up regarding what regarding whether the character should have spoken. Even though, even though they have dialogue choices in the traditional manner, and that is the spirit monk in Jade Empire, and I understand why why they didn't do this because, well, this is coming off the heels of Knights of the Old Republic, where Revan didn't speak. I would I would yell I would yell spoiler warning about that, but statutes passed, so yeah, not my, so not my fucking problem. Um, but I do, th- I do think that there was a bit of ludo narrative dissonance in, um, J- in Jade Empire, especially, especially, especially given a, especially given a Chekhov's gun that ends up, that ends up launching. Since everybody keeps, everybody keeps telling you that there's, that there's some weird, that there's some weird flaw or something off about the way you fight. But you, but um, the only, t- but you never, the closest thing that that is that's explored is baiting. Is you is Sky telling you that you're that you're baiting enemies into an opening they can't see. And the cu- the culmination of that is is of course your f- your um parental fig your parental figure throughout Sun Lee. Um, utilizing a flaw that appa- that he bi- that he built into you when he raised you. The pro- the problem the problem is the 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 animations that you use and the like aren't all, are not are one not all that di- not all that different from it from anybody else. They're it, not different. No. The same animation styles for whatever uh, styles they may be using that you can also use are exactly the same. Yeah. And two, and two. Um, it's ne- it's never made it's never made clear how you even corrected that flaw. It's never even really made clear what that flaw was, just that it existed. Mm-hmm. If you don't know what it is, then how do you know how to correct it? And if you don't know how it was corrected, it, it's a Chekhov's gun that goes off, and it's a blank. Yeah. It had a lot of. It should have had much more narrative impact, but it didn't. And when and when that ha- that's that's honestly I can, that's honestly why I um 
I will I will admit, even as a massive fan of Jade Empire, I do have issues with the third act because of that. You because you have a you have a situation where you should where this should be a Chekhov's gun that everything that everything is led to, much in the same way that there was that there are all the hints regarding regarding the main character being Revan in Knights of the Old Republic, and de and dealing with the repercussions of that. The Chekhov's gun in Kotor went off and was impactful. That was yeah. a huge reveal for the time. It, that was a second I am your father moment. Yes. It was. It's it's still regarded like a lot of ten top ten lists, biggest twists in gaming. Nine times out of ten, Kodor is on that list. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But Jade Empire's Jade Empire's attempt with it. <clears throat> if I'm be if I'm being honest, if I if I were in the writer's room, um I wouldn't have. I wouldn't have kept that. I wouldn't have kept the the hit the secret flaw in there at all. Um, I would have just said, "Daddy is adoptive. Daddy is just that much better." That that and up and up until this point, you've never had you've never had a reason to doubt him as the villain. Yeah. And the. Th up until, and even even with even with that you can ju you can just as easily have it that he still that he just they just turns heel on you kill kills you and then you come then you come back and kick his ass um yeah he's trusted that's your weakness you trust him no my boy i'm not the bad guy how could you think such a thing it's obviously this person you fought and defeated and then shank oh by the way i lied yeah a little, little cliche, but when used properly, and especially in witch stories, kind of common, mm. um, makes sense. Yeah. Although I would argue Jade Empire Shuncha, but still. I think J I think um, Jade Empire is one of those straddle the line kind of games, kind of stories. Or rather, or rather, it's Wuxia that di that starts dipping into Shuncha near the end. Well, I mean, you have immortals from the get-go, so it, it's it's definitely deep in Shansha territory. Yeah. Even if your characters never get to that particular part themselves. No, they just they just have to deal with a commerce guy who's who's bit who was bitching at you for the fact that you kept you kept giving him too much work. A commerce guy that's bitching at you because you got him demoted. <laughs> you got me demoted in the heavenly in the heavenly court. Oh, I'm sorry. You're still immortal. What the fuck are you complaining about? The thing that the thing that's funny is that is that mm -hmm. some, is that sometimes he said sometimes he talks about feeling terrible for whoever took his old job. <laughs> As if it's a case of well, not well, not not my problem anymore. Whoever whoever has to write a thousand pages for every fight you end up getting in, that's <laughs> that's numfop. But I hi. I highlight I highlight that that example as an as an instance of you of you have you having a particular backstory that's pl that's some um, played with, but I remember I remember some I remember someone asked me asked me at one point what about the Avatar in the Ultima series. From being honest, that falls uh. into the that falls into as classical of a. Of a um audience audience surrogate as you can get. Yeah. Besides, in part nine, they did give him a voice. We all know how that turned out. <laughs> oh lord. <laughs> What's a paladin? <laughs> you know. I think. I think um. I think I've stumbled upon one. The in my thinking that you probably didn't want me to bring up, monk. Shoot. After all, we don't like how much Peter Molyneux uh, doesn't think his own shit stinks. <laughs> um, oh yeah, let's let's talk about Fable. <laughs> like, you're voiced when you do actions and emotes. Hi. Um, and you make dialogue choices. 
sort of. <laughs> um, you're co- you're called the in the first one you're called the hero of Oakvale. Mm-hmm. I mean, they tried to make them as every man generic uh, audience insert characters as possible. Um, but, like, even in the first game, you're a descendant of another hero. A very famous one. Yeah, you kind of lose it at that point. <laughs> yeah, and when and when it comes to... When it, com- when it comes to... Fa- when it came to Fable 2, I'm trying... Um, I'm. You had a, you had, a um. You had a backstory. Yes, you. Yes, you did. There was also there was also the whole thing of be, of being able to. Being it, being able, being able to get, being able to get some degree of, some degree of, um, fa- of family. Yeah, and um, his, his uh, his name is the hero of Southcliff. Mm-hmm. Um, of course, his ancestor is the hero of Oakvale, and his uh, descendants. Will be not, so- the not hero- Southcliff, um, Bower Lake. No, his his name is the hero of Southcliff, or no, it isn't. Never mind. In the mini game, never mind. Yeah, Bower Lake. You're right. Or Bower Stone. Was it Bower Stone? No, um, Bower Lake. Yeah. <laughs> there was a there was a Sparrow. Ones and it's yeah, Sparrow. Sparrow is the is the nickname. Which, if you want to get around not having not having to do some sort of hey you, giving your protagonist a nickname is a good workaround. Sparrow. I'm just going to call him Sparrow. Mm-hmm. Um, and then, of course, we, we, we have the hero of Brightwall being the hero of Fable 3. They're all, they're all titles, yes. And you get to name your characters, yes. But they're all very well entrenched and established in the world they're a part of. And because, in part because of the... 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 Um, the personality, the the very British humor that we see throughout the Fable series, it's hard to it's hard to look at any it's hard to look at any of the hero characters in the Fable series as um, blank slates. In that in that same regard, and just to, just to use just as an example, I'm going to I'm going to share with you guys in the council. The wiki image for the for the male and female version of um, of Sparrow and his dog, or Sp- or Sparrow and her or Sparrow and her dog. Could you choose a female hero in Fable Two? I can't remember. Yeah, you could. You could. Um, I haven't played Fable Two in such a long time. Yeah, you could. You could, and th- but the po- the point is the des- the design the design itself, um, cares care carries a bit of characterization, and that's that's something else. If you're go if you're going to have a audience surrogate type of character, I do think that you should design it to have a degree of ambiguity. Yeah, neither of these is very ambiguous. Mm-hmm. One of these is very clearly some sort of a of of a um, corsair, for lack of a better word, yeah. and the other is very clearly. I would I would almost say that the that the male uh, hero of Bower Lake would would fit in well with um, Lansknecht. Yeah, and. Just to, just to just to further the thing, since the the protect the hero of Brightwall is one a, is who's is is a um per, is a is a prince or princess who eventually becomes king or queen, a concept that a concept that probably would have been done better if it was handled by anybody else. <laughs> no, monk, goddess isn't a bad game at all. 
<laughs> yeah, they're oh, like w- ones in in full on dress regalia as a prince, and the other looks like a bar maiden with a rifle. Yeah, that's what I was thinking too. She looks like a bar wench. I mean, you do get you do get kicked down you do get kicked down to the bottom after early early on, but st- but still. Started from the bottom, now we here. God damn it! I hate you, bro. You still there? <laughs> I, I, I'm gonna be honest, monk. I was saying in the back of my head, "Don't say it, don't say it, don't say it," and it, it, it just had to happen. <laughs> it had to happen. Okay, better image. Yeah, they're both in their dress uniform, and you can see that the 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 princely or or princessly dress. Is very much the same. Mm-hmm. Um, just obviously a dress or a, what looks to be basically a um, shot and pike level uh, uniform, dress uniform. Yeah. And the but the but within that the char- the characteriza- the characterization because of the British humor that is is within the series and what. Was part of its appeal, Molyneux notwithstanding, is one of the, is one of the re, is one of the things that it, that can easily discount someone from being an effective audience surrogate. Oh, now you look you look at a design like say Master Chief. There's no, there's nothing there. It's as it's as the Mjolnir marks the Mjolnir Mark Seven armor. Is as uniform as you can get it, and even, even though he has lines, you ha- you um you can you could put you could put anyone behind behind that suit. Yes, and oh, go ahead. And of course, the other thing is that throughout the entire franchise, we never see his face. Mm-hmm. On top of that, um. The audience surrogate doesn't have to be a blank slate. I don't think we ever made that explicitly clear. We've been implying it. Yeah, that was the the, uh, the two types we brought up earlier. The former is the more of the blank slate. Wasp the is player surrogate. A, Wasp is definitely yeah. not a blank slate. <laughs> yeah. yeah, you you can have a player surrogate that's not a complete blank slate. That's that's more of the latter category. So you just got to make sure that you know you can establish a character, but put them in a scenario where it's understandable why they wouldn't know everything that's going on. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, in this regard, that's why you know that's why you won't hear me make this kind make this kind of remark regarding say, um, Kingdoms of Amalur. Mm-hmm. Which I'm, gl- I'm glad that I'm glad that people are actually giving it a chance when it got when it got its PC port, or rather when it got its PC remake, I should say. Yeah, it always had a PC port. Mm-hmm. In fact, that's how I played it, and that, and that was the reason why I had mm, Origin. Mm. Yeah. I don't have it anymore because with because in less than a week I cracked the I I grabbed a crack so I could so I could play it without having to launch Origin to play the thing. A pox on origin, a pox on you play. Yeah, if if any, um, but in the in that same regard, that brings me to that. Then you have the awkward scenario where a character a character didn't speak early on, and then in sequels they do. And a big example I want to use with this is the Fear games. Mm. Fear one. Is still one of my favorite FPSs of that of that era of all time. Mm-hmm. Espe- now, the the character in that, the known as the Point Man, does not talk. And they tr- they tried to go with a different protagonist in Perseus Mandate, but um, nobody likes Perseus Mandate. <laughs> Kind of like no one likes Pl- Plutonia, right? No, people like people like Plutonia, but Perseus Mandate was one of those outsourced expansions that never do well. Mm. Yeah. But in Fear 2, 
and in Fear 3, he is a voiced character. And that ki- that kind of switch ends up cr- ends up creating issues. I mean, it, now I, I'm pretty sure someone say, but but wouldn't that also didn't that also cause issues with the Jack trilogy? It would, except for one problem. They Daxter. Both, one Daxter t- Daxter talks enough for two people. Two, um, they make fun yes. of it. Yeah, yeah, in, they in, literally in universe. establish in universe. The, the fact that he didn't talk originally and that the the, the experiments in the second game kind of just kind of fucked him up and gave him reason to start opening his gap. Mm-hmm. Daxter, and he, he, like it's a, it's a comedic moment, too. Yeah. Daxter makes a bunch of fun of it. Yeah, the whole, <laughs> sorry, he's new with this whole talking thing. Exactly. Yeah, so you, you, you give that a pass because that's part of the joke. Mm-hmm. Yes, yes. <laughs> when done right, that can really work. And when it comes, the other now, in a lot of these cases, we've used we've used the whole thing with voice acting. But I do want to I do want to make clear that the determining factor is not voice acting. It only it only really is when de- when when certain circumstances um, put that forward. That's the reason why I brought up the timing with Dragon Age Origins. I'm not. I'm not saying that they should have that they should have gone f- full voiced with the protagonist, but after they, after they made a huge deal of the of the dialogue wheel and the voiced protagonist with Commander Shepard in Mass Effect, maybe it's something that should have been considered. But, it but even even just in text di- dialogue is something we'd be we'd be fi- we'd be, um fine with. You see, there's been there's been a lot of cases where 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 a game where a game will give you a set of choices and then you and then you gesture a response. Even that is a step in the right direction. Which you know, admittedly, a lot of Bioware games have had, including Dragon Age Origins. Yeah. Now, of, co- of course, a step in the wrong direction is those is those emotes being exaggerated. Once again, fuck you, wow. Yeah. Or, at, or I should, or at, that's a admittedly that's a little bit too harsh. Those exaggerated those exaggerated expressions worked in a situation where you weren't going to be all that close to the action, where you're where you're going to have a far off camera, so you needed to you needed to have exaggerated em, emotes in order to e- in order to make it distinct. But when you're trying to but when you're trying to tell a story that is not going to be that out in the distance, you can't ha- you can't do those same kind of emotes. And you know what? Final Fantasy fourteen aped those and used them as jokes in universe. <laughs> I'm not kidding. Uh, anytime make anytime anyone makes those exaggerated gesturing while talking poses, it's usually accompanied by the whimsy music in the game. Or, bum 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 bum. Or just any time you're dealing with Manderville, because <laughs> because fucking Manderville. Hmm. Hildebrand Manderville. Or his father, Godbert. Or the ever terrifying Julian, his mother. <laughs> but to be fair, that to be fair, that whole thing is one is one giant gag, and for fuck's sake, one of the one of the instance boss fights in that. Was, was the was uh, was um was Ultros. You know the t- the the uh, the infamous the infamous octopus and his and his windy bu- and his windy buddy. <laughs> Ultros and Typhon, yep. yep. Ultros Ultros and Typhon. Typhon. Yep. Mm-hmm. Um, I'm gonna be honest though. Hildebrand has some really good stories. Oh, he do- he does. Like trying to rocket to the moon on a gun spear. <laughs> Boy. <laughs> yeah. And the key thing the the key thing with with these with these kind of surrogates is that no matter no matter what, um even even though even though certain people Todd like to like to claim that you like to do the whole do anything type type of uh, type of approach, you can re- in 
and oh, you're not going to be just because you can potentially do anything in certain RPGs doesn't mean you're going to be doing everything. You are you are going to be going through some kind of story in some form. So the people who t the people who talk up a storm about total freedom or more freedom in in a given RPG are either talking out of their ass or they're a certain idiot that you and I are familiar with, Zan. Which type of idiot are we talking about now? Do we, the, there are so many we land based. The one who the one who doesn't <laughs> understand game design on the on the across um, forum. Ah, yes. I'm not going to call him out, but uh, yes, him. Mr. I design for my depression. At least that's my working theory. Mm -hmm. um, <laughs> but, Monk, I actually noticed we haven't, like, lambasted any of the Bethesda RPGs in this entire thing. Oh, yes. Let's get, let, this is, a, that's a good opportunity to do that. So, um, when it comes to, when it comes to the Vault Dweller in, Fall, in Fallout 3 and, in Fallout 3 and 4, you large you you still had dialogue options, so you didn't have the you didn't have the problem that we get to as much. With Fall, with Fallout Three and with Fallout New Vegas in particular, um, New Vegas is New Vegas is off the hook because one, it's fucking good, and two, that was Obsidian, not Bethesda technically. So it is one it it, it is once again a win by um, a win by being technically correct. Well, the best, the best kind of correct. Well, and you have an excuse for having speech issues. You were just shot in the fucking head! <laughs> yeah. And... The game was rigged from the start, mm -hmm. one would say. But with Fallout 4, this is where we have a problem. Now, one particular thing... Fallout 4 was, was where they tried to have both a voiced protagonist... And try an aping of Bioware's dialogue wheel. The funny thing is, that dialogue wheel was for was everybody was already starting to see the cracks in it. By that by the t by the time Fallout Four had come out, and I just Lore Runner had done a, had done a video years ago on the matter in what he calls the Tor effect. Where the dialogue option that you're given because it because it's a because it's only a few words doesn't end up matching up with what you actually end up saying. Oh yeah, there's a lot of dialogue options like that in the Old Republic. And Fallout 4 has this exact same problem. Even even more so, you are the vault dweller in Fallout 4 is very clearly not a blank slate. A parent and a and a spouse mm -hmm. and a part of their community, and their spouse is killed and their child is taken while they are in cryo sleep. And what and one of the one of the impetuses of you of you going out and going out into the wasteland is is finding is trying to find your child. Then you end up getting to the Institute, and you wish you didn't. <laughs> Kill your son or nuke Boston. Uh, that meme was uh, so good. Tough choice. <laughs> although, although, um, although, if I if I could choose a third option and just shoot and just shoot Preston, I'd take that. Another settlement is in need of our help, Monk. Fuck off. <laughs> <laughs> Oh come on! That one was set up for me to hit. That was a soft underhand throw. Oh, I I know. The only we're just going along with it. <laughs> yeah. Um, I don't hate him as much as I hated Otis in Dead Rising, but I still hate him. But I've taken pictures of war zones, you know. <laughs> or was I covered war zones? Excuse I've, me. I've covered wars. He probably did a better job at that than Michael Cole. Not that that's saying oh! much. <laughs> but when it when it comes to when it came, the other the other major issue when it came when it came to um Fallout Four is is the fact that 
consider the fact that with the with the dialogue wheel in in a BioWare game, at the absolute most, you're going to have six options. You're not always going to have six options, and you have less and less of them as t as time goes on. But that's the cap. Because of the way Fallout 4 did it, you're going to have four options at most, and a lot of times it feels like two sets of two. And I would bring up Fallout 76 in the when it comes to this, but I'm not even sure Bethesda knows what kind of game Fallout 76 is supposed to be. <laughs> would you believe there's uh, that someone donated me that game and has been insisting I play it? Given who did it, I am not surprised one bit. <laughs> Don't fall into that trap. Oh, no, no, no. I told him straight out. Never gonna fucking happen. Mm -hmm. Now, when it, com when, it com when it comes to a lot of, a lot of um, old PC-style PC style RPGs, um, those are ones where you can get a lot of those cases. You can get away with a with a silent protagonist as well as well as an audience surrogate because they're meant to be because one they're meant to be both and two it's because of the because of the sheer amount of moving parts within those especially when when it comes to just character creation on its own you don't have you don't have to deal with a lot of the issues that we cut that we cover here. But I think it. I think th I think this would be as good as a time to to kind of to kind of summarize the do's and don'ts when it comes to a si when it comes to a silent protagonist and an audience surrogate. I think an I think an audience surrogate should be should be a character that you can tie a, you can tie a connective tissue to the audience to. It doesn't have to be a blank slate everyman, but there should be. Enough, of the, enough there to con enough there to draw the connection. Yeah, there are there are well established characters that can still be good audience surrogates. Mm -hmm. We see it happen in in multiple media all the time. Yeah, and how how many times how many times in how many times in anime in general and shown in battle anime in particular, we have we have some story about the about this e elite or otherwise in group. That the that your protagonist is trying to is trying to get into and ends up get ends up getting into that group by the by the end of just the intro episode. And it does it doesn't have to be. I know some people would bring up some something like oh your bleaches or your fairy tales or that kind of thing. Mm -hmm. If I need to use an if I need to use an exa an example that isn't in that particular motif, um, Food Wars qualifies. Oh yeah. In, fa in fact, in fact, in the and granted, granted, Soma is, cer is certainly not a blank slate, but he is the new guy and a bit of a, um, a bit of someone who tr I think I said at one point trolls the line between whether he is an outright idiot or just plays the role of an idiot just to mess with people. <laughs> I'd definitely say more the latter. Oh. I'd say it. I'd say it started as the former, but morphed into, but morphed into the latter. But yeah, I can see that. Um, just just one with a just one with a with a um, with a love for cursed food that even gives me pause. <laughs> <laughs> I like food. I don't like what some things both him and his dad think up might be. N g no, no, just no. I do I I do not want I do not want to see octopus and peanut butter in the in the same conversation ever again. God no. Um, Wasn't octopus it was squid tentacles. It's same difference in the end. It's still yeah. it's still ten, it's still tentacles and peanut butter. And it still molested his childhood friend. <laughs> As I like to say I've seen enough hints I don't know where this is going. I'd say, ah, thank you, H.C. Bailey. I'd say, a, I'd say, a, I'd say a second, a second um, pillar to to fo to focus on is if you're is if you're gi if you're giving backstory to to a to a character that you want as a silent protagonist or a surrogate, 
Um, your backstory should be should be bu should um be bullet points at first. Yeah, it should be it should be sparse and somewhat ephemeral. Mm -hmm. If you end up giving your character too much backstory, you've inevitably disqualified them from being able to connect as a as a silent or as a surrogate, because they're not because they don't have. Because if there if there's somebody like say a like say a prince or a prince or a princess in a in a given fantasy setting, why are you having the why are you having the world explained to them? No, there is a legitimate point for that monk. A drastic move in class. I mean, remember that the prince or princess in Fable Three did have to have a lot of the world explained to them because they'd only ever li lived in the lap of luxury. Fair. So it, when it comes to the the best, I guess, litmus test for your audience surrogate, whether it's the protagonist or the, the character that you're playing or some supporting character, are they already well established in the situation they're in? Mm -hmm. If they're someone who, wherever they're coming from, when they come to where they're at, they, would, they should and do, uh, should have the knowledge that's there. They're not a good surrogate. But if it's someone, uh, you know, transfer student from a, a city school to a, to a boonies school, uh, prince going to pauper, um, these are all people who have a well-established background. There's something about them that gives them a very tangible connection to your world. But the part of the world they find themselves in is something they've never experienced and been connected to. So their connection then becomes ephemeral to that specific portion. That's your litmus test. Mm -hmm. um, let's use Berserk as an example. Up until oh, Jesus Christ. <laughs> in the opening chapters, all that we knew about Guts was him being... Well, let me, let me, refer, let me rephrase that, because because there's the eternal debate about what about where to start. Let's use guts in in the in his in the chronological introduction, i.e., his first appearance in the Golden Age. At that point, all the so mercenary mercenary guy who eventually kills Basuzo the butcher. Yeah, he kills Basuzo. He ends up getting he ends up getting noticed. Gets in that duel with Griffith, and because he lost. Is is essentially is essentially um, conscripted into the band of the hawk. Uh, it, it's a very dark. Well, I mean, gold, the golden age arc isn't as dark as everything else, but still pretty dark. Mm -hmm. It's a very dark. Uh, defeat means friendship. Trove. <laughs> yes. The and the um. I'd and I'd say I'd. I say another. I say another thing that ha that that uh, that another pillar that we ha that I think we have to nail down when it comes to whether something whether a character qualifies or disqualifies as a sur as a surrogate and more importantly as a silent protagonist is the design and the nonverbal communication that you that the character exudes. And one one might argue that 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 might seem a bit stiff. This is one that that might seem a bit stiff, but admittedly, this is one of those cases where it's more important for establishing a silent protagonist than with an audience surrogate. With an audience surrogate, you can have them you can have them look and ca and ca and characterize through not through nonverbal whatever you whatever you like. Yeah, because like I said, ultimately the litmus test for a surrogate is. Is the situation they are going into a situation they will be unfamiliar with, mm -hmm. supremely unfamiliar with? Um, that's the reason why I br that's the reason why I bring up I brought up um, Joker in Persona Five earlier. Mm -hmm. Hey, I because because when you have when you have a character whose visual oh. design um ends up ex ends up exuding. What could be considered character questions, then that that's going to come into conflict with the idea of having them be silent. When you have a character design that itself is too loud. Yeah, and 
since since um, shades brought up chrono in chrono trigger i'm going to use i'm going to use that as an example consider consider the way that he consider the way that he looks yeah his design is the loudest out of the entire um <laughs> cast besides palm. maybe robo palm tree head <laughs> I mean, you have you have the palm, you have the palm tree head <laughs> Even Magus's design is not nearly as loud as as Chrono. You have, also, you have, let's, a, let's... you have a you have a gi like approach, and you have the fact that despite the despite the area that he's in, he is he is he is using a katana. Well, let's let's also let's let's not get past the fact that uh, literally all of these characters were designed by Akira Toriyama. Akira Toriyama is not known for gooding do, uh, for for doing good, um, discreet characters. His best Street discreet character, character yeah, yeah, his best discreet character is Gohan, and Gohan yeah. kind of fades into the background most of the time, which is bad. If you want to disc discreet characters, should still be present. Yeah. So eventually, you know, Toriyama just decided, fuck it, let's make this half saying angry as shit all the time, and then we got, you know, Gohan versus Perfect Cell. <clears throat> I, would, I, I would... Even his background characters aren't discreet, Monk. He has dinosaur people amongst citizenry! The man can't do subtle! No. <laughs> If that, if one of the, the gods case, of destruction was a clown, for fuck's sake. If that's the case, where, um, how how would you how would you rate that when it comes to the hero designs that he's done for, throughout this throughout the Dragon Quest series? They're all really loud. Like every one of them has a very distinct visual style. It's it's not something you can just say, oh, that guy's Joe Schmo down the street. Every hero design I've seen from Toriyama, whether it's Dragon Quest, Chrono Trigger, whether it's in his own works with Dragon Ball, every single character design that is meant to be a character you notice and interact with on a regular basis when it comes to video games, or a character you notice and watch all the time mm -hmm. on his shows, the, it's, the visual design is, is loud. Kira Toriyama can't do quiet character design. I'm sorry. I'm not sorry, actually. No. Fuck that. I'm not sorry. <laughs> it's part of why his art is so good. His loud character designs are part of what makes his art endearing. So yes, Chrono being spiky redhead Goku with a katana, because that's what he is. Let's not. That's, that's, that's Goku's is. face and Goku's hair. Mm -hmm. Yes. I mean, that's even <laughs> Dragon Ball clothes, for fuck's sake. Those boots are all about Dragon Ball. <laughs> um, the two-tone yeah. pants and the socks and the pants cuffs going into the boots, that's Dragon Ball. Yeah, it, that is it, definitely Dragon Ball. This, <laughs> everything screams this is the main character. Everything screams it. It's, <laughs> it's not even a question. In that same vein, um, I'd like to contrast that with Surge in <laughs> Chrono Cross, who certainly ha certainly has loud elements but he's it but he but is a but is a loud element that fits in with his environment i could yes. see surge as an, as an everyman because he because of the kind of the way people dress and carry themselves in the um archipelago that he comes from yes well i mean they're a, they're an island people mm -hmm. and uh island island people tend to be they, the bright they're, they're imitating their their actual tropical area mm -hmm. so it's a it's almost like a they're imitating the brightness and color seen in their tropical area mm -hmm. now but also correct me if I'm wrong Toriyama didn't do character design for cross no he, no no he no. didn't but that's why he's no, using that no, as a comparison to show the, the difference here. Yeah. Um, I'm not... Uh, who was character designer for Cross? Um, no, Nobuteru Yuki is what I'm seeing here. Mm -hmm. 
Um, at least one of them. He's probably the primary. I'm sure there's other people off to the side that may have done specific characters. Um, <clears throat> the th- surge can definitely be an everyman. There are some. There are some. Uh, <laughs> some of his party members that can't. Oh my god! <laughs> First of all, let's let's just let's say this now. Um, there's what sixty characters you can get total amongst all the close to it. Yeah. yeah. I'm I'm looking at a list right now, just scrolling down. I'm like, that's a lot of people. Let me just pick a random one. I'm gonna pick Mel. Mel is brighter than Surge. She's another island brat, at least it, what it looks like. Um, but she's way brighter than Surge. Uh, I'm gonna grab this and throw it in council real quick. Um. This is a party member, not a main character. This is someone you can potentially recruit. Mm-hmm. Is it that obvious that you can potentially recruit them? I don't. I don't know. Couldn't be. I, honestly. If I, I mean, sure, in the game, it's probably a little more obvious. But here, yeah, you <sighs> would not. You would not. You would not be mistake. You would not be surprised if, if someone mistook that for an NPC. Yeah. And, well, and especially since she's also in Gold, uh, Goldove. Um. You know, it's another island place, so it makes sense. But her design is still louder than Surge's. That's the point I wanted to get across. Mm -hmm. She's an island girl, and the place you find her, this looks pretty normal. But in that respect, the contrast is almost that Surge is an outsider in his own community. That many muted colors compared to the rest of the islanders? It still doesn't take away from the fact that he can be an everyman. Yeah. And again, with again with some of the characters we've talked about who should who should be speaking, you either ha- we I think we've I think we've um, developed a pattern where they end up disqualifying them, themselves for one of two reasons: either they have too much back too much backstory or are too established within the world, or the, or they have a or they have a visual presentation that stands out too much from the environment that they're in. Mm-hmm. I'd also like to note that uh, that most of the flamboyant characters in Cross are um, the animal people. The mermaids, the dragon people, Lynx. I fucking love Lynx's design. Lynx is so goddamn cool. But yes, <laughs> what disqualifies someone from being a silent protagonist is the fact that it's two it's twofold if they've got too much that would draw them into the world around them to the point that they would have to respond to things and people would expect a response Mm -hmm. uh your silent protag fails or if their design is too loud like i said despite the fact that chrono could potentially be a good silent protagonist from one end um he's not particularly attached to his world to be honest we only know that his mom really knows him that well even the people like uh and and luca that's about it his mom and luca uh everybody else at the festival kind of knows him as that one kid we see go around the village Mm -hmm. but it's not He's not truly deeply established in his in his setting and in his community. Yeah, he could he be good as a, is an everyman. Yeah, he could be an everyman from that respect. But his fucking design screams, "Pick me, pick me! I'm the special guy who's gonna save the world." In this regard, the, uh, the uh, go ahead. I, I think we're we're missing the third one that I brought up before. Mm-hmm. You create scenarios where the the care the mate the protagonist should be responding yes if you create that kind of scenario and you do, and they're not responding you have failed yeah so I'd, I'd say with I'd say with those three I'd, with those three pillars I'd say we I'd say we have um we have at least one example of a of a prime case of what not to do with the but with the background thing I'd say corvo fits that bill oh yeah to a T. 
Corvo's Corvo's design isn't very loud, and I honestly he probably could fit in as an everyman considering his training. But he, who who he's attached to mm -hmm. in that world? There's no fucking way. Yeah. Yeah. Who is attached to, and just his just his occupation is naturally going to attach him to people. Mm -hmm. To too many people. Yeah. And the second the second pill the second pillar, the visual design. I'd say. Well, we've ar we've already made it very clear that that is a step that is filled in pretty well with Chrono. The man is redhead Goku. I cannot stress this enough. Anyone who hasn't seen Dragon Ball, first of all, do you live under a goddamn rock and do I have to call you Wukong? And, <laughs> and second of all, go watch any one climactic fight clip show on YouTube from Dragon Ball, Dragon Ball Z, Dragon Ball Kai, Dragon Ball GT, even though I hate GT, Dragon Ball Super, any of them. Go, go watch an Ultra Instinct fight and tell me that Goku's design is not loud. Oi. And the yeah. third, the third pillar is what is when the story is written in a way where where um you're, where the character is being spoken to, and you should be responding. And I'd say our pillar for that is Ardium. Yeah, absolutely. Um, I'm trying to. I'm trying to. Th I know. I know a lot of. Pe I know a lot of people are hesitant about the about the Metro series for one reason or another. It really shouldn't be, but they but they are regardless. So, if we have to go with a more weeb friendly example of our of our third pillar of what not to do with protagonists and and audience surrogates, what what would you guys suggest? Um. So, in a, a situation, a, a weeb example of a situation where they should be responding, and it's ex and a response is expected. That's um basically uh hmm let me think about that one for a second I'm yeah, I'm trying I, to think about really examples I'm like it's on the tip of my tongue but I just can't remember my yeah mind keep, my yeah mind same here same here my mind keeps going to some of the more recent Zelda games that's that's a good one that's a, actually a really good one yeah. um. Hold on, let me let me just look at my my game list for a second. Oh God! Oh, this will, we'll be here a while. <laughs> no, I said for a second. There's a reason. Um, I mean, you could say, uh, many of the main characters from older Monster Hunter games. In fact, hell, even in Monster Hunter Rise, your character doesn't say much, but. There are definitely a sp responses expected. It's a trope that they're still using, probably because the focus is on hunting, and I guess that you know, from a purely um, mechanical standpoint, you don't really need your character to talk much. No, you do have you do have you do have your character does have lines during ba during battle, but that's as far as it goes. Um, lines during battle and noises they make when they do certain poses and stuff like that. Yeah. Yeah, and. I think the I think the closest they did to trying to do some sort of story, quote unquote, was with um world. No. Every monster hunter has had a story. Whether that story is large in scope or not is is the case. I mean Monster Hunter three, the story was you're trying to help this island out and they keep having weird geological issues, and eventually you find out that it's C Deus rubbing his horns on the bottom of the island and causing earthquakes. Whereas then you but, go with uh, with four and generations where you're going all over the goddamn world. Even Rise has a really good story about the rampage, but yeah. the and the stories are inherent. It, but if we do use world as the example, and we should, because world has one of the more grand stories. It, it, it in generations ultimate. The big reason why I bring up world is your is you have a partner who is constantly communicating with you, but and talking for you. Yeah. They they're your voice and they really shouldn't be. They should be someone you bounce off of, but they're your voice. Yeah. Um especially considering that by spoilers but we're past the fucking, you know, we're, we're way past the the, the fucking uh cut off on that one. 
Uh, especially once you defeat Zenojiva and start being called the Sapphire fucking Star. Mm-hmm. Yeah, there's, there was no reason for you to be silent. So it's. I've got something that just. Go ahead. I've got something that just came to came to mind. If I just to throw it up, how about Vampire Hunter D? How? How? Where would he fit? Where would he fit in? He does talk. He's, he, even in, but even in the original he movie, did. he does have lines. He has. He has very lines. little. He ha- he has very little lines. D strikes me as the straight man to left hand. Yeah, in their, in their relationship. <laughs> yeah, Paracelsus, the demon Paracelsus. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But yeah, he he and and honestly, he talks just enough to get his point across. He doesn't need to speak more than he has to. It's and, it's like Sekiro in that res- in that respect. Yeah, pretty and much. To further that point. I think I've, I think I mentioned this in the past when we did the watch party watching the better of the two Vampire Hunter D movies. Hey. Um, blah, um, D has throughout the novels has always struck me as having the kind of motif that you see out of a lot a lot of the a lot of the wandering Avenger pulp characters, you know, char- characters like Conan and Solomon Kane. The the white hat cowboy who show, who shows up to to a to a town with a problem solves the problem and then leaves. And monk, uh, go ahead. I hate I hate to interrupt. I actually do in this respect, but my eyes flickered across it, and I and I thought of the perfect third pillar example, uh, a a character where responses are expected and you should be responding but aren't. The arisen from Dragon's Dogma. Yeah, I I can't argue with that because there's a lot of dialogue where you're being talked to directly, and it's it's very clear that there should be responses. Especially, there should, absolutely should be. Especially since the whole thing with you is that you got your heart stolen by a fucking dragon. Exactly. The there you go. That's the third pillar right there. The arisen from Dragon's though, Dogma. Though to make a counterpoint, did you see the animated adaptation of it? <laughs> Not yet, Eat I haven't. shit, Shades. I haven't seen it. <laughs> uh, let's just say there's a reason why even Mother's Basement put this on the roasts. <laughs> he roasted that one because, oh, do they fuck it up. Yeah, the main character talks. Kind of wish he hadn't. <laughs> no, actually, uh, we were talking about Zelda earlier, and it just dawned on me. There is a perfect example of how the Zelda series uh, of a Zelda game where Link absolutely should have been talking but wasn't. Which one? Mm. Hyrule Warriors. Hmm. Honestly, yeah. <laughs> and Age of Calamity. And it, and it, by extension, Age of Calamity, because there there are times where all the characters are talking to each other, and when it's time for Link to speak up, no, it's the fucking fairy that's doing the talking for him. Yeah. <laughs> it's because all he can do is he's brain damaged enough to only talk in screams. <laughs> <laughs> oh, there's that angel joke. joke. Yeah, I mean, there's come no, on now. It's a very old. It's a very old joke. <laughs> that joke. That joke I, needed to be made here, but no, I agree. I agree, but still. Yeah, those those are some good, con- more contemporary examples. I guess is the best point to make here, because mm-hmm. while Metro is a fantastic set of games, it, it it can't be argued to be contemporary. But I, th- I think th- I think those three pillars are a good su- are a good summation of this particular issue and wh- and um why why I think that uh, I think that going forward a lot more a lot more a lot more designers should con- should consider the question of when they're doing a silent protagonist is this something that it that is going to be helped or hindered by the story I'm trying to tell. If it's if it's going if it's going to hinder the experience, don't do it. And truth be told, the silent protagonist as we've often seen it, we're not seeing it as much. And if we are seeing it, it's in places where it would make sense. I I'd actually like to point out a studio that does the split between silent protag and non and voice protags very well. A studio I love dearly a studio that has done nothing but make really good video games and music. Super giant. Look at Bastion. The kid is not voiced. 
the narrator tells the story. Mm -hmm. Oh, yep. beautiful example. But then you have Transistor and Hades. Oh my God, Zagreus! <laughs> oh my God, Zagreus! Is that? Oh my God! <laughs> and that's uh, good. And that's a good thing. That man is. I. They need to pay that 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 voice actor triple what he got. I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> like he got paid very well from what i understand but still they need to pay him more mm -hmm. <laughs> zacharias is so good um yeah. and super giant pulls this divide exquisitely so they know how to do it right mm -hmm. mm. and it's it's certain it's i can i can safely say that if if I were if I were leaning into full on game design where I where I had to do where I had to do voice where I had to have voices done, um, based on some of the stories that we tell around here, I'd pro I probably wouldn't use the silent protagonist unless I absolutely had to. But it ultimately depends hmm. on the on the kind of game that would end up being developed in those scenarios. And the only roles Monk would ever hire me for would be equivalent to Hades from Kid Icarus. <laughs> or, yeah. Uh, or, nope. or have you do your best James Woods impression? <laughs> Though touche. This, this leads me to a very interesting question, and I and, and I'm gonna play into your feel a little bit here, Monk. Shoot. How about the idea of having a tabletop campaign with a silent protagonist? Um. Hmm. I will admit that we that um the the idea of do, the idea of doing a a full on silent protagonist I have I have tooled with this a couple of ways one where I had where, where I had you in a in a much more reserved role during during through the ninth world but yep. there was also the time where I ran a supers campaign and one of the one of the players wanted to be wanted to be essentially an XP of Black Bolt. The way that, the way that I the the way that I would ha that I would do it is I would if I'm GMing I would tell that player you have to make it you have to make absolutely fucking sure that you commit for one and two you're going to have to put a lot more emphasis on describing your gestures bo body language that um even facial expressions to make up for that, um, even if you're do, even, or make it explicitly clear if you're using, say, sign language. So it can be it can be done, but you gotta but it's one of those things where you gotta you gotta make sure you're walking a tightrope on that kind of thing. Yeah. As for my comment, um, as GM, sometimes there are times where I wish certain players were silent protagonists. Those little fucking shits. <laughs> <clears throat> I'm the GM. I speak for the NPCs. Stop being a murder hobo or I'll break your fucking knees. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> you could, you, you, you must you be could... really glad that we never went that far with our campaigns. That oh. Even Maddie and Mike didn't never went that far. The the worst that ever the worst that ever happened when it came to that kind of thing was Mike doing dumb things. Which I, which I have tormented <laughs> gun, for years. Gun ago. shield. <laughs> no, no, the gun shield. No, in this case, the gun shield isn't the worst offender here. The worst offender is when he was when he tried to break from a stealth mission. Hmm. When I made explicitly clear three times in the briefing, stealth is not optional. <laughs> so, he, here, here's here's my point. Going off of that meme, by the way, uh, just as an aside, shades. A good GM like Munker myself, if you do decide to go full murder hobo, we know how to play that game. Probably a little better than everybody else. <laughs> GMs kind of know the ins and outs. If there's one guy who, who who talks up a storm about how nobody can hit him because of how his how ridiculously high his AC is, throw out a rust <laughs> monster. <laughs> <laughs> if, if there's a... If there's a guy who touts uh, about how all his spells will solve everything, well, I hope you like this anti-magic zone. Mm -hmm. <laughs> oh, and, and you're trying to dispel the anti-magic zone? Um, 
it's it's kind of imbued into this mountain. The whole dungeon is anti magic. Yeah, you, you did not good fucking that. luck. Good fucking <laughs> luck. Try it. it. It'll it'll auto it'll auto fail. I have a one in tw- I have a five percent chance of auto success. I- I'm sorry. What was that? I'm trying to say the GM's rulings don't matter. <laughs> huh? Your character just dies. I'm sorry. <laughs> We don't like being that kind of dick GM. We don't like being that guy. But if push comes to shove, we w- we will do- we will play that role if it if it comes to it. I'll give you a I'll I'll give you an impossible check. Mm-hmm. So just so your character, yes, specifically your character, can get shish kebobbed, asshole. <laughs> As the saying goes, don't fuck with the DMs. Mm-hmm. <laughs> but. I bring I bring up the I brought up Black Bolt to you to use in my example for that because that's that's a case where it's probably best that you don't talk unless you absolutely have to and even th- and even then you should barely whisper because well for for those for those un- for those unaware who haven't who haven't read much in the way of comics let alone the um, Marvel Knights Run of the Inhumans which you should read Black Bolt has insanely Power has an insanely powerful so, um, sonic abilities through his voice. You should also probably never voice Moon Knight. <laughs> no, God. no, nobody, nobody can be as insane as Moon Knight as Moon Knight. Mm-hmm. <laughs> but I'd say that, I'd say that covers our, that covers our th- our three ma- our three major pillars. Now, I do have a few in, I do have a few interesting. Um, in interviews that I've got that I've got lined up throughout the week, um, I will be having Tyler Elliott, who I'll be ta- will be talking about um, super stuff. I don't have his. In fact, that's one of the two interviews that I ha- that I have this week. I will be doing a. There will be a couple um, interest interesting side things that Zan and I will be will be doing th- will be doing throughout the week. Because on Wednesday there will be a one off Valley of the Judge covering New Edo, specifically it's. Um, it's quick start guide, which isn't really a quick start as much as it is a beta. <laughs> um, on Thursday, we'll be covering the top ten most anticipated RPGs according to EN World. On Friday, of course, the return of Valley of the Judge covering Va- covering Veil of the Void. And on sa- on um, Saturday, I'll be interviewing a game dev known as Lucky Cat and trying to talk and trying to walk her through um, her her um, English as a second language. It's not the first time I've done this, and it's go and it's going to be a new challenge for me because she's because she's making an Otome game, and you know. You know uh, <laughs> mm-hmm. <laughs> I love it. I I never back down from a challenge. <laughs> and of course, um now Monk has to be wooed by other men. <laughs> <laughs> would you believe me if I said it wouldn't be the first time? Yes, actually I would. <laughs> oh. And of and next week we'll be ta- we'll be tackling Another episode of Geek Watch covering something a little a little bit special. Something <sighs> something that something that managed to piss me off so much I ended up writing an entire script for it in less than twelve hours. <laughs> I've been in his shoes. I know what that's like. Sometimes that must have been that must have been a uh, a mighty need there, Monk. Pretty powerful urge. Too subtle. <laughs> yeah, that's about as subtle as a sledgehammer, there, Zan. No, not at all. If I wanted, a, if I wanted a subtle sledgehammer, I'd, ca- I'd, I'd call, I'd call the man with three H's. <laughs> <laughs> Wonderful. <laughs> but, but he I, would fuck it up, Monk. He couldn't get the job done. Well, he doesn't do jobs. <laughs> God damn it! <laughs> I cannot. I cannot argue. That's true. He's not a jobber. 
<laughs> and also, he wouldn't fuck it up. His uh, father-in-law would. <laughs> but... That, but that's going to do it for this particular episode of Geek Watch. We will see you here next week with so, with a fair bit with a fair bit of fun and a few surprises. But until then, on behalf of the good brothers present and not present, my name is Mildra. I am your gaming monk, and join the watch.